So you won't say, counsel. given that you think the report is flatly wrong and gratuitous, you can't say if you want the material to be made public if the American people would, No, what I can this? say, it's being, they're discussing it, they're looking at it, there's a process that's involved, and so the White House Counsel can, obviously has taken these questions from all of you, and so they're looking into it. I just don't have anything further to say about that. Release the transcript. Release the videotape. We own it, by the way. We paid for it. He works for us. They all work for us. Cough it up now. How about that? Also, the, uh, you know, the overall inflation rate for a January, 3.1%. Food inflation, 14, 14.2%. Fuel, gasoline, and home heating oil, up 12.8%. Household supplies, up 11.6%. Overall inflation, 3.1%. That's how averages work in Democrat world. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it's gratuitous. My friend Brian says, uh, I always leave a 20% gratuitous. I always leave a 20% gratuitous. He's talking about uh, restaurants and things, you know, where everything is a lot more than 3.1% more expensive than it was. Our Democrat Party. Now, we've got crazy Democrats. There is a, a Senate race going on in California, our most populous state. And the biggest liar in Washington, Adam Schiffless, his wife's code name for him is the inchworm. She calls him the inchworm. Schiffless is running for Senate in California. Katie, the world is on fire and we're all going to die soon, Porter, is running for the Senate in the state of California. And the radical extremist mental case, Barbara Lee, is running for the Senate in the state of California. They're having a competition to see as the radical leftist, extremist, anti-capitalist mental dwarves that they are. Can you say dwarves? I think that's okay. They are competing to see who can be more generous with other people's money. And they're fighting over the minimum wage in the United States of America. And here's the, uh, here's the crazy thing. Katie, the earth is on fire, we're all going to die soon, makes her nine-year-old daughter angry that we're all going to die soon is calling for a minimum wage of $20 an hour, a a federal, national minimum wage of $20 an hour. Adam Schiffless, the biggest liar in Washington, which is better than being the fastest car at the Indianapolis 500, Adam Schiffless is calling for a federal minimum wage of $25 an hour, $25 an hour. Not to be outdone, the extremely disturbed, radical left-wing, anti-capitalist, mental dwarf, Barbara Lee, who is running for the U.S. Senate, is calling for a federal national minimum wage of $50 an hour, 5 zero. I would quit this job and go get a minimum wage job. Oh, maybe. Maybe not. I, um, the $50 an hour, $5 $0 an hour. Imagine trying to run anything with a minimum wage of $50 an hour for every, you know, uh, would you like uh, Coke with that job? Every position would be $50 an hour. They say that's a livable wage. Uh, But then, of course, they're so stupid, the price of everything would go up so much that it wouldn't be a livable wage anymore. They couldn't afford to live in the world that they've just created because the minimum wage of $50 an hour would cause a can of Coke at the 7-Eleven to be $18, and you wouldn't be able to afford anything again. These people can't spell the word economics. They, They don't know what the word means. And they're members of the House of Representatives. They're vying for the Senate. They would bankrupt pretty much every business in the United States of America would be bankrupted by a $50 minimum wage. Uh, These people are so fundamentally anti-intellectual that they're literally fighting over this. Katie Porter is being modest, $20 an hour. 
Uh, and Adam Schiff got a one-up that with $25 an hour. That had put almost everybody out of business. And Barbara Lee, oh, no, no, no. I'm much more generous than you are. I'm much more giving. I'm much more caring. I care about people. I'm demanding a $50 an hour minimum wage because I'm Barbara Lee, and I'm asking for your vote for the United States Senate. That's, uh, that's, that's your Democrat Party in 2024. They don't understand even the ABCs. Uh, just, uh, just amazing. Ms. Lee, you have the next question. Both of our Democratic opponents are calling for a minimum wage between 25, 20 and $25 an hour. You're calling for a $50 an hour federal minimum wage. That's seven times the current national minimum wage of seven twenty-five an hour. Can you explain how that would be economically sustainable for small businesses? You have 60 seconds. This was during a debate last night in California with the uh, uh, California's doomed, doomed. Uh, Katie, the earth is on fire, we're all going to die soon. Porter, uh, Adam, inchworm shiftless, the biggest liar in Washington. Barbara Lee uh, explaining the $50 an hour minimum wage. I believe it was the United Way came out with a report. I believe that, it was. Uh, very recently, $127,000 for a family of four is just barely enough to get by. Another survey very recently, 104000 for a family of one. Barely enough to a get family by. of Low one. income because of the affordability crisis. And so just... There's an affordability that. crisis. There's an affordability crisis. And she thinks that we have families of one. We have families of one. They use the words, but they don't know what they... She could be a U- U.S. senator when uh, the the uneducated people in California have the opportunity to vote. But they'll probably just get shiftless. Or maybe the earth is on fire and we're all going to die soon. $127,000 a year. I I assume she's talking about California and not uh, most places. And she doesn't uh, explain because she doesn't understand. I believe it was the United Way that said a family of one. (laughs) They, They don't know what the words mean. And therefore, you have to have a $50 an hour minimum wage. Just do the math. Of course, we have national uh, minimum wages that we need to raise to a living wage. You're talking about $20, $25, fine. But I have got to be focused on what California needs and what the affordability factor is when we calculate this wage. Ms. Lee, thank you. She doesn't even know that she's running for the U.S. Senate where you can't raise the minimum wage in California. You have to be in the state legislature of California or the governor of California to raise the minimum wage in California. And she is really that stupid. She is so unintelligent, so unserious, so uneducated, so ignorant, so wrong about everything that she thinks from the U.S. Senate she can raise the minimum wage in California. She's running for the wrong office. And she's going to get votes. Democrats will vote for her because... You know, every day is an IQ test. Man, oh, Manischewitz, I am telling you. And that was the debate last night. Can you imagine? Living in California, these are your choices. Remarkable. Yes, sir. Now, let's uh, let's go back to, uh, you know, I haven't gone to a phone call in a long time, have I? I haven't, and I apologize for that. They just give me too much stuff, and I want to get to it. Too much crazy on the table. I hate leaving all this crazy on the table. We have this special election going on in New York to to replace George Santos. And there is a great Republican candidate. And the Democrats have a white man who's a member of the patriarch, probably cisgender, and he lies all the time. I've only seen him speak a couple of times, but I heard him lie. All right, let's go to the uh, telephones, Michael. Let's go to John calling from Germantown, Maryland, where I don't think there are a lot of Germans anymore, and that's okay. John, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Hey, Chris. How you doing? Thank you for taking my call. You, uh, you betcha. Yeah, I, I'm just wondering uh, why fake bombs were put in front of the RNC and the DNC headquarters. And, uh, you know, what did the future vice president have to do with it? Because... Apparently, the White House said she was at the Congress when she was at the DNC. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that, that she placed the, the devices, but 
uh, it kind of it looks really funny. Like maybe uh, she was used for like to, to blackmail her maybe later on. I, I don't know. Well, I can't uh, speak to Kamala Harris's potential involvement in pipe bombs being found January 6th at the RNC and the DNC headquarters. She was uh, <clears throat> scheduled to make a trip, and she did make a trip to the DNC headquarters. And, and of course, we know that nothing happened. We also know that the FBI has allegedly offered a $500,000 reward for information leading to the arrest of the mad pipe bomber, who is on video and uh, in one of the videos making a phone call with his cellular telephone. And you'd think that with all the, you know, the biggest investigation the FBI has ever, t- un- ever undertaken is the January 6th investigation. They've been using battering rams uh, and uh, coordinating with, uh, you know, their left-wing news outlets to, to raid people's homes in the middle of the night from Alaska to California to, to Maryland. Uh, and arresting people, dragging people out of their homes. And somehow they can't, you know, the cell phone they've been tracking, everybody's cell phones, uh, every cell phone that was anywhere near the Capitol on January 6th, the FBI has been gobbling up all the metadata. Remember uh, James Clapper, the, the director of national intelligence, lying repeatedly under oath about the government spying on all of us and gobbling up all of our metadata metadata. And then he lied repeatedly under oath to the Congress and faced no consequences for that at all. Um, the uh, Speaking of which, Mayorkas, who lied under oath to Congress, the FBI director, Chris Verre, lied under oath to Congress, uh, and no consequences because they're lying on behalf of the Democrat Party and the left. So they live in a consequence-free life where law uh, and order are not the, uh, the thing. And equal justice under law, which is in the relief above the entrance to the U.S. Supreme Court is a satirical reference, I think. It's a, a, a prank line that we put up there. But the, the, they, they didn't get the cell phone records from the DNC headquarters where they see the mad bomber making a cell phone call, John. And there's a $500,000 reward, and, and nobody's come forward to say, oh, yeah, I know that guy on the videotape. Oh, yeah, that guy was calling me on his cell phone. And a half million, it's the biggest reward ever, I think, by the FBI. And, um, and honestly, they can't, they can't find this guy. And, they, this, and, and the story keeps changing, doesn't it, John? Well, could this have been a backup plan if uh, the protesters hadn't uh, breached the, uh, uh, the, the Congress? I mean, the, the Capitol? Well, look, I mean, they used it any way you slice it. They came out and said, and it kind of doesn't make any sense. If it were the DNC headquarters, then obviously you blame those terrible MAGA people. But since it's the DNC headquarters and the RNC headquarters, uh, that claim kind of goes out in the, you know, that, that's gone with the wind because that doesn't make any sense, right? But then, John, there's the matter of the guy being on videotape and using his cell phone, and they can track cell phones and the whereabouts, and the phone number is called, and and they know who owns the cell phone and and all of this. And somehow they just can't get this one mad bomber. And then, uh, you know, the stories about whether they were actually bombs or not keep changing. It's, John, I, I'm, I continue to be reminded of the Soviet, the Soviet book, a Mountain of Crumbs, written by the Soviet author Elena Gorakova, who wrote, they lie to us, we know they lie to us, they know we know they're lying to us, but they keep lying to us. And I, I've been covering this town for a long time. I've never seen this many lies before in my life, and coming from Washington and our government. Well, why can't Congress subpoena NSA to get the records because NSA definitely has any communications between anybody. Well, that's right, because they've been corruptly collecting all of our metadata and then lying under oath to Congress about that. And the metadata means that every cell phone call that is made is stored on a server in Utah somewhere, and they can call it up at any time based on geographic location or based on your name, John, or um, you know whatever whatever technique they want to use, whatever avenue they want to go down. Uh, and somehow they can't find this guy. Isn't it amazing? Well, I mean, I think NSA needs to be subpoenaed for that information. 
Uh, you know, they're probably busy putting together a new letter. You remember they tampered in our last election, our intelligence community, led by, among others, penitentiary-faced John Brennan, who voted for the Communist Party for president and then became Barack Obama's CIA director. They wrote that big lie letter for which they should all be in handcuffs because they meddled in our presidential election. They lied to the American people. The Hunter Biden laptop has all the earmarks of Russian disinformation. You guys have all the earmarks of Russian agents and operatives in the intelligence machine in the United States of America. You know, I covered the intelligence community for 10 years to the extent that they are covered by the news media. The lies are so big that no one would dare not believe them. What a country. We should have an election and vote these people out. Just saying. Hey, it's Chris Plant. Excited to tell you about our July 2024 Listener Sea Cruise. We'll be sailing around the British Isles, visiting Scotland and Ireland. Please join us. Visit ChrisPlantCruise.com. Bum, 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 bum. Tony Bobolinsky. Tony Bobolinsky, great American, former naval officer, found himself in cahoots with the Biden family, became a CEO of um, one of the many Biden family corporations, maybe more than one. And he is testifying on Capitol Hill today uh, under oath. It's a closed session, so it's not on TV and we won't see video or any of that stuff. And, and uh, we got all that. But Tony B., um, you know, uh, Joe Biden is the big guy. It's right there in the laptop that the intelligence community deceived us on, our own intelligence community, like the Soviet days. In that email, there's a statement where they go through the equity. Jim Biden's referenced as, you know, 10%. doesn't say Biden, it says Jim. And then it has 10% for the big guy held by H. I 1,000% sit here and know that the big guy is referencing Joe Biden. Um, it's That's crystal clear to me. I, um, uh, gosh, uh, Tony B, it's uh, crystal clear. Um, he is regretting that he found himself in bed with the Bidens. I know one thing, I haven't been called in front of him, and, uh, which is uh, surprising, disappointing, I don't know. You, you were know, the business some, partner some, of the Biden people, family. Some people say, you know, aren't you happy that you didn't have to go through and, and sit in front of people for 20 hours getting asked a thousand questions, and I say, uh, no, our country deserves the facts. They need to know about the facts. And when you have a media and, um, you know, some of the biggest uh, tech companies, Facebook, Twitter, publicly acknowledging that they did suppress the story. That should be considered problematic. Got a new uh, Tony Bobolinsky statement, and he is on Capitol Hill today. I'm coming out now because American people still are being lied to about the facts, right? Nothing's been done. They're still thinking, oh, that deal never happened, or, you know, Hunter Biden was a troubled child. Tony Bobolinsky, uh, former business associate of the Biden family and CEO of at least one Biden corporation. Maybe he can explain to Congress what these corporations did. But Hunter Biden's ex-associate Tony Bobolinsky heads to Capitol Hill to testify in impeachment inquiry. So the Democrats are attacking him and smearing him and slandering him. You know, the usual stuff. House Republicans have brought in several former associates of the Biden family business, whatever that is, to testify in wide-ranging impeachment investigation the Fox News Channel reported yesterday. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day, isn't it? Tomorrow is Valentine's Day. So, uh, you know, if you're a man, you've got you got to do, and you have a woman, or, you know, whatever your choice may be, uh, tomorrow is Valentine's Day. And that means you got to do something about that. I made a very special uh, dinner reservation, very special. But we'll leave it at that. Now, uh, Tony Bobolinsky, former... Hunter Biden and Biden family associate testifying behind closed doors today on Capitol Hill. Latest witness in the impeachment inquiry against President Biden. 
The uh, Democrats, and that means the media, they attack everybody because that's their role in our society. They're profoundly corrupt people. And and that's what they do. They, they smear and they slander. They attack. You know, you remember the Hillary Clinton, uh, the Hillary Clinton line, there is only the fight, right? There is only the fight. And it's all they do. They're just a disagreeable, disputatious, combative bunch. That's probably why they attacked Fort Sumter that time. But Tony B., put out a statement. He said, why is Joe Biden blatantly lying to the American people and the world by claiming that he did not meet with me face to face? Now listen to this. He should call his son Hunter and brother Jim as they can remind him of the facts. Wait a minute. You mean his memory might be faulty? Because they're going to start using this as a fallback for Joe Biden real soon. Well, of course, he didn't remember meeting with Tony Bobulinski. He's got a faulty memory as the Democrats are edging Joe Biden closer and closer to the cliff. He's going off the cliff. He's going out the door. He's going off the cliff. What is it? You know, that that uh, TV show Yellowstone, whenever they uh, they kill more people than the Sopranos in that show, this uh, ranching family, they kill more people than the Sopranos. And and they take they say they're going to take him to the train station. That's their code. There is no train station. There is no train. They take them out into the mountains uh, to a cliff, and they uh, kill them and throw their bodies off the cliff. And, uh, you know, this is, this is, they're about to take Joe Biden to the train station because the Democrat Party recognizes that he's a liability to the party. And again, on July 11th of last year, I posted a video on our social media saying Joe Biden will not be the nominee by the time we reach Election Day next year. We are now in next year. Election Day is beginning to loom large, and the Democrat Party needs to get rid of Joe Biden. And they need to figure out a way to bypass Kamala Harris because they don't want her to be the nominee. Her poll numbers are worse than Joe Biden's poll numbers. But Tony B. saying, really, Joe doesn't remember meeting with me face to face. Maybe you should check with Hunter and his brother Jim. They can remind him of the facts. That is the new reality of the Biden White House. And uh, because they're that corrupt, the news media and the Democrats, but I repeat myself, will soon be turning this around and using it to Joe Biden's advantage that he can't remember anything, right? That's going to be... That's going to be a thing. Also, the Democrat Party, um, because they, you know, were it not for double standards, they'd have no standards at all, and they lie about everything. You see that the Biden campaign started using TikTok day before yesterday and posted a video on the Chinese Communist Party-run TikTok with the FBI, the FBI director, Christopher Wray, who's not an honest man, a sneering, um, you know, bad guy. He warned us under oath up on Capitol Hill a month ago, more than a month ago now, that TikTok is being used by the Chinese Communist Party and the government in communist China to hack into everybody's business. And if you use TikTok, uh, they're all saying it, and all the all the Silicon Valley uh, big daddies are saying it too. Don't use TikTok. They won't let their kids use TikTok because they know the communists use TikTok in China to wheedle their way into your business, right? The Biden administration has ordered the federal government to stop using TikTok on their government devices because the communist Chinese party wheedles their way into it. They don't even have to hack. They just have access. You give them access when you use TikTok. And day before yesterday, the Biden campaign proudly proudly announced that they've joined TikTok And they started posting things right away. Why? Well, I don't know. Let's ask Tony Bobulinski and let's ask Hunter Biden because uh, Hunter Biden, the Biden family, have taken in millions of dollars from communist China. Remember when Hunter Biden went on Air Force Two over to China with then Vice President Joe Biden? And they lied to us, 
saying that he didn't have any business meetings there. We much later learned that he did have business meetings there, and Joe Biden lied to us, and they all lied to us, and that's fine, right? The rules are simple. They lie to us. We know they're lying. They know we know they're lying, but they keep lying to us. That's the Soviet Union being described by Elena Gorakova in her book, A Mountain of Crumbs, when she was a subject of the Soviet Union. We are becoming more like the Soviet Union than like the United States of America. And we're being overrun by illegal aliens who are everywhere. Just saying. Illegal aliens everywhere. Speaking of which, you know that our northern border is being overrun also? Did you know this? Our northern border is being overrun also. More than ever before. Because Joe Biden rang the dinner bell and the Democrats are giving out gift baskets and handing, you know, the cartels your daughters and things like that. And again, do I have a story in here on the, because these must be under border stuff, because these, one of our categories I think is border stuff today. In Montana, I mentioned it in passing earlier. In Montana, the state of Montana, which borders Canada, it is a border state, but it borders Canada. And in Montana, the cartels from Mexico and Latin America have flooded into Montana. They've gone onto the Indian reservations because Indian reservations are essentially independent countries within our borders. The state police have no authority on Indian reservations. The town police outside and the county police outside of the Indian reservations have no no authority. Uh, Their jurisdiction ends at the border of the Indian nation's property. The FBI has got trouble going on to Indian reservations. And here's the story. Mexican cartel reportedly flooded Montana with fentanyl comma, meth, methamphetamine, by targeting Native Americans. It's described as a prey-predator situation. Mexican cartels have flooded Montana with fentanyl and meth by setting up operations on Indian reservations where law enforcement is scarce, according to a report. Stephanie Iron Shooter, an American Indian health director, Uh, for the Montana Department of Health and Human Services, talking to NBC Fake News, said, they know who to choose, just like any other prey-predator situation. The drug pushers have found that the notoriously deadly fentanyl goes for nearly 20 times the price in remote Big Sky country, Montana, where its population of 1.2 million is spread out across 150,000 square miles of rugged terrain. They initially target Native Americans by giving away the initial supply of drugs, transforming them into addicts, the former Drug Administration investigator Stacy Zinn said. The cartel will send out their advance team or individuals to get to know Who's distributing small amounts on the reservation? Who can uh, sink their claws into, Zinn said. And then what do they do? Well, they give out free doses of methamphetamine for long enough to get people addicted if they live that long. But on the Indian reservations, the fatality rate for drug overdoses is twice that of the state of Montana more broadly. But the... Mexican cartels come in. They come in from Texas and Mexico, following the trail to Montana. Then when they do that, then they own them, the Indian reservations. We've seen that over and over. This is all because of Joe Biden's open border policies and the Democrat Party getting people killed. More than 100,000 fatal drug overdoses in the United States of America every year now, a number greater than the number of Americans killed in the Vietnam War and the Korean War combined, not in a single year, but the entire war in Vietnam, the entire war in Korea. Every year, our mortality rate produces a number greater than that. And the Native Americans are being targeted by the Mexican cartels. They know that there's 
you know, they got tribal law enforcement authority, but the numbers are not big. They're not a powerful law enforcement authority. So amazing stuff. A counterfeit fentanyl pill that can be made for less than 25 cents in Mexico sells for $3 to $5 in cities like Seattle and Denver uh, in the drug markets there, but can go for up to $100 per pill in remote parts of Montana, NBC fake news reported. And the counterfeit pills have, you know, they're mixed with uh, other deadly things, but still enough to get you addicted and all that stuff. So that's a big story out of uh, Montana. Now, let's go to... um, Let's go to Senator Rand Paul, number 21, uh, because on Capitol Hill, they have passed in the Senate, they have passed the, where's my note on this, the giant foreign aid bill, $95 billion, $95 billion spending bill, which was voted on this morning in the Senate, and it passed more than $60 billion for Ukraine to get us through September of 2025. Then there will be another fake crisis. $19 billion for Israel, $4 billion for Taiwan, $9 billion that will go largely to Gaza and the West Bank. They are terrorist organizations running the place. And again, my peace plan for the Middle East is Hamas unconditional surrender. Release all the hostages. Vow not to murder people and kidnap people and rape people and then civilization will stop bombing you forward to the Stone Age. Senator Rand Paul on the uh, on the bill, we're calling it, we used to call it a border bill. Then they pulled this border stuff out of it. Now it's a Ukraine foreign aid bill, and uh, we're not going to pay for it. We're just going to put it on the tab. What we have here is a Ukraine first bill. This bill was never really about securing our border, but about securing another country's border. What we have here is a failure of the elites of Washington on both sides of the aisle, the leadership in the Democrat Party, the leadership in the Republican Party. What we have here is a failure of these elites to understand that the American people want to put America first. Hence, Donald John Trump. What we have here is a failure to communicate. Rand Paul. 61% of Americans live from paycheck to paycheck, and they want to put Ukraine first. I want you to talk to your constituents at home, the ones who live paycheck to paycheck, and tell them why you're shipping $60 billion to Ukraine. This will be $170 billion. We have never before in the history of the United States flooded so much money into another country. Uh, But Putin, Putin bad, Putin real bad. You're a Putin shill. You're a Russian agent, a Russian stooge. If you don't want to give them, and it's already 113 billion or something, here is 60 billion more. Plus there are billions more for relief after the bombing already built into this, but the bombing will never end. This is the never ending war. Rand Paul. This is why the Democrat Party is losing the working man. This is why the Republicans have become the party of the working class. This is why many, if not most, members of the unions are now looking at Republicans because we support the working man. We support the working women of America, and we recognize that they do not want to send their hard-earned money and taxes halfway across the world. They're not, they're not on our side. <clears throat> Pretty fundamental problem. The Democrat Party is not on our side. You know what's going on at our northern border with the illegals coming in? They can go into Montana more easily from the north, too. Targeting the Native Americans in Montana with fentanyl, methamphetamine. Our northern border, bad also. That's what this bill is. It's the middle finger to America. Uh, This morning, very early this morning, I was watching the television news on the Fox News channel, and a, a sheriff from the state of New York, Clinton County, New York Sheriff 
David Favreau was uh, live on the television. And he's talking about all the illegal aliens coming into the United States illegally by way of Canada from our northern border, through our northern border. Say, what's this? Yeah, and it's uh, the numbers are much bigger than they've ever been. Uh, in 2023, 189,402 illegals captured coming into our northern border. And we got about 12 border agents on this 5,000-mile border once you build in all the zigzags going on. Here is Clinton, Clinton County, New York, Sheriff David Favreau. We're seeing a significant increase in numbers and people that are incredibly desperate. And we all know what happens when people are desperate. They'll do just about anything to accomplish their own personal goals. Dangerous, bloody stuff. In 2022, Joe Biden opening up the United States to the whole world. 109,535 caught coming across. And then in 2023, a 73% increase to about 190,000. Sheriff Favreau. In the nighttime, it's down into the teens. And with temperatures like that, you're not going to survive out in the cold very well unless you're fully equipped for it with insulated gloves, boots, hats, jackets. These people don't come prepared. Most of them are being sent up here. They're unexpecting of what the weather is going to bring what the the potential is for them, and they're out in the middle of the woods with, unfortunately, we've seen tragedies in the past with waterways that pass through those woods. And if they're not familiar with navigating that terrain, you can end up like uh, one suspecting individual did with drowning. One unsuspecting pregnant woman. They've got people dying. It's all on Joe Biden, like the drugs of the Indian reservations in Montana. None of this is humane. There's no doubt about it. And it certainly was not well planned. And sadly, from a law enforcement perspective, we know that if Congress today were to totally close the border and stop this illegal migration into our country, it would take a couple of years for us to be able to get back onto our feet. And And he talked about how the attack on police in New York by gangs of illegal aliens and the Venezuelan gangs there We should expect to see a lot more of that because Joe Biden and the Democrats are making that the new normal in America. It's the fundamental transformation of America. Obama told us to learn Spanish. 